Whether skiing down a snowy slope or hiking up a rocky one, pointed metal poles can provide much needed support. They add balance and rhythm to both experiences. Aluminum poles were first developed for skiing. In recent years, the concept has been modified for trekking poles. Ski poles and trekking poles look alike, but there are important differences. Ski poles are one set length, while trekking poles can be extended as needed. Ski poles begin with hollow shafts made of aircraft-grade aluminum. They bake them for up to 12 hours to stiffen the metal. Next, the poles travel between rollers, which apply pressure to straighten them. The stiffening of the metal beforehand is key here. It ensures that the aluminum doesn't snap during this critical straightening. They insert one end of the ski pole shaft into a device that squeezes it down to precisely tapered dimensions. It's a shape that will better resist breakage and will also make the pole easier to swing. An automated cutting tool spirals into the shaft to even the jagged edge. Another cutter spins around the outside of the wider end of the pole to trim it. Next, a machine punches a little hole in that wider end. The hole will serve as a guide during the stenciling of the trade name and artwork onto the exterior. With the ski poles tapered and trimmed, they head into an inspection station. A supervisor scrutinizes each one. Once he gives them the thumbs up, they're ready for sanding. The ski poles spin between two sanding belts to remove dusty residue and rough up the surface so that paint will adhere. The poles now twirl on an overhead rail as a spray gun applies the paint. An automated tool then squeegees paint through stencils to transfer designs and lettering onto the poles. Each pass of the squeegee-like tool applies a different color and this layering effect builds up the designs. The poles now head towards an acid bath. An electrical current ripples through the acid solution. This causes the poles to oxidize for a scratch-resistant finish called anodizing. Meanwhile, on the trekking poles production line, machinery inserts long wire bristle brushes into the various shafts. This roughs up the inner surface. It's a step that will enable an expander device to grip it to extend the poles. A spray gun coats some unfinished poles with clear lacquer. The owner of the factory now surveys a lineup of ski poles. He's on the lookout for smudges or other flaws. They meet his approval, and so it's on to the next step. A carriage moves each ski pole forward towards a carbide tip and presses the tip into the tapered end. With this tough tip in place, the ski pole is now equipped to pierce any hard snowpack. Next, a worker slides rubber grips onto the handle end of the poles. Like a big automated fist, a hydraulic mechanism shoves the grip more tightly onto the pole. There are many different kinds of grips, each with a different look and feel, depending on the type of pole being made. Some ski pole grips even have clips for attaching gloves. Trekking pole shafts now roll down the production line. An automated arm slides plastic sleeves with carbide points onto the lower shaft section. A spinning tool drives part of an expander mechanism into the trekking pole's middle shaft. This expander will allow the pole to be lengthened or shortened to the user's preference. Machinery then inserts the other part of the expander mechanism into the lower shaft. Finally, a worker assembles the parts, sliding one section of the expander mechanism on the other. Finally, she sharpens the tips, and these poles are now ready for action. <laughs>